when you talk about developing interest you will not just talk about the interest you talk about a project or something that you have achieved or worked on i just looked at him and i was like okay this person is um grounded guess what he returned it to me and said everything was perfect he didn't even correct one thing and i was like how is that even possible i hope personal statement you won't see one single correction hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is veronica thank you all so much for the engagement on all of my previous posts and specifically i've been seeing a spike in the views on my posts especially my pcdf full story video because the scholarship is out now like they are taking in new applications for the next cohort 2023-2024 scholars so if you see yourself qualified to be potential scholars i would advise you to take this opportunity it's ongoing now and it's going to end on march 24th take the opportunity apply ensure that you put your best foot forward this video is just going to be about personal statement. I know that out of all the requirements, I have touched on all of it. I shared um, how I applied and I shared in my previous video how the interview went, how I picked my school, how I applied to schools. And yes, I promised that I was going to bring a new video about how I put together my personal statement. It's just going to be like a template. It's not like it's generally acceptable. Your personal statement can differ. There are a lot of resources online that you can use to draft a very solid personal statement. So whatever I am saying here is based on my own personal statement. I'll just share with you the number of paragraphs, what I touched on each paragraph, how, how many words I had per paragraph and the exact things I put in my personal statement that helped me secure the scholarship. So everything I'm going to be saying is going to be based on my own personal experience. You don't have to follow it word for word or exactly how I put it, but at least I'm sure it would help you and guide you while writing yours let me start by telling you what a personal statement is a personal statement can also be seen as your professional profile so if you have a profile on linkedin all what you want to put in your personal statement is already an highlight on linkedin so you can use that as an idea go to your linkedin page check all of your experiences and your educational background you can put that together and if you do not have a linkedin page please get one open a linkedin page and ensure that you're active on linkedin because your LinkedIn page will show your passion, your achievements, your experiences, and your educational background. And these are just the things that you need to put into your personal statement to make it solid and strong. So one thing I'll mention is that when you're writing a personal statement, there's always a question that is asked, especially from different bodies. It might be for a scholarship, it might be for admission. So they might tell you, this is the personal statement I want, but I want you to answer this particular question. For PTDF, the question they ask, and I'm going to be reading it from my phone, in not more than 500 words, state the reasons for the proposed study, its relevance to the industry, and its expected impact on national development. So that's the question they want you to answer. But the truth is, you can't just go ahead to answer the question. You have to lay a foundation okay and talk about how you you know you add that interest in the first place the interest to study what you want to study and because depending on the scholarship that you are going to be applying for most of them will tell you to make choices choice of school choice of course because you have picked the, or made those choices you have to explain why and then you now answer how studying in that school or studying that course won't um, impact your nation or 
how it's going to be relevant to your industry or how it's going to impact national development. So let's start. Let's move on to my own personal statement, how I tackled the question I just read to you. My personal statement had seven different paragraphs. And the truth is that it had seven different paragraphs because I had to talk about the three schools so each of the schools had different paragraphs so aside from those three schools it's just four paragraphs in total so don't overthink it it's like let's just say four to five paragraphs but because i had to pick one paragraph for the schools when i was explaining them it's made up to seven so i'm going to tell you what each of my paragraphs contained and then i'm going to tell you how many words were in each paragraph and then how I just put it together to come up with a very solid personal statement. Like I said earlier, you don't have to follow it verbatim the way I put it, but make sure that you cover all of the questions that were asked and you answer all of them. So let's start from the first paragraph. In my first paragraph, what I did was to give a very solid introduction and that's the paragraph where you put in all the details that they want to hear about you you have to put in enough information to keep the person reading hooked okay so it doesn't have to be a very long one but trust me you need to make it very 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 strong so i'm going to read something from my phone just to give you an example so i'll be citing examples of how your paragraphs can be formed so that you can have an idea. So let me give you an idea of what your first paragraph can look like. Graduating with a first class degree in accounting and my journey as a chartered accountant never prepared me for the full diverse ride and experiences that I will go through during my career. Starting as a credit analyst in one of the biggest banks in Nigeria, moving to the agricultural sector as an associate finance analyst and bagging an offer as an account executive in an energy, oil and gas downstream organization, I have been able to realize and master the interconnectivity between finance, big data and energy as a whole. So guys, this is my first paragraph and the introduction so in this paragraph you will notice something i just summarized my background i stated that i have a first class i stated that i am a chartered accountant i said i started in a bank and then i went to the agri sector and then i went into the energy sector and then i put everything together that is an interconnectivity between all these positions that i, I have occupied and now it has made me who i am so in the introduction, you have to pick the best things. Later on in this video, I'm going to be giving you tips on how to write your personal statement, but just follow me on the breakdown template. So this was what I put together in the first paragraph. So it's an introductory paragraph and you have to be able to put in keywords that matter. You might be saying something that to you, is not very 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 solid but the way you will put it will make it look like it's a very big position or it's a very big seat that you occupied so don't use mere languages i talked about interconnectivity i said there's an interconnectivity between having a first class graduating as a chartered accountant and then having experiences in those fields so everything blended into making me who i was then i moved on to the second paragraph in the second paragraph i now explain how i was able to develop an interest for further studies from the theoretical and practical experiences i'd explained in the first paragraph when you talk about developing interest you not just talk about the interest you talk about a project or something that you have achieved or worked on in the years of experience that you are so i went in the lines of these experiences have built my analytical foundation and as a result i've been able to apply it further in my experiences as an accountant i went on to citing an example because i had worked on different projects at work i mentioned one of the projects that i worked on and then i backed it up with the interest so i now generalized all of these experiences and said as a result 
I have an interest of further studies to learn and get more inclined in the finance and analytical environment. Talk about your background and talk about how that background has ignited an interest for further studies in you and tell tell in your personal statement the project that you have worked on. After you've establish the fact that you now have an interest for further studies then let's move to the third paragraph where you start talking about the schools and the courses that you want to study so the third fourth and fifth paragraph will discuss the school each school and each courses but paragraph what we are going to be talking about is why you want to study in that school and why you want to study that course it is at this point that i'll mention that you do not give reasons why you want to study in a school or study a course to be that um, th they have a world-class education they teach well they have this ranking the truth is that all schools abroad especially in the uk they have high ranking they teach well they have a good curriculum so those explanation might not really stand so i want you if you are going to tackle each of these paragraphs to make your research on each of the schools and the courses and then check something really really specific about the school and about that course for example you can say um i read a profile of a particular professor you can write the name of that professor in so 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 university let me use um my university areas what university and i am so fascinated by what they are doing in the finance industry thus i will be glad to work with them as my research project would be in that area that can be a reason you can talk about a particular person that is doing something you can also talk about the composition of the courses the the subjects in that particular course for example in first semester we will be studying corporate finance which covers the topic of capital asset pricing model which is a model that i would love to implement in my project or in my professional life so this is me just coming up with something you can just you know be more solid while putting this together so i'm just giving you an example another thing you can say is the composition of international students you can say international student composition of the school has been widely celebrated and recognized and they have the best unions that welcome international students so don't be generic about it be more specific so you talk about the first school talk about the second school talk about the third school and discuss the courses in between so you've covered the first to fifth paragraph i told you that my um personal statement add seven paragraphs so we are almost done right good let's go to the sixth paragraph but it's at this point that i will now tell you the breakdown and the number of words that we have exhausted and the number of words that we have left so that we can mentally calculate what we have to cover in the remaining two paragraphs everything i explained in the first paragraph where it was the introduction i covered 91 words in the second paragraph i was able to cover 109 words and it was about um six to seven lines as well in my third fourth and fifth paragraph where i was talking about the schools i was able to um cover about 71 words 70 71 and i think the last one was about 40 words for between the first and the fifth chapter i covered about 380 words i remember that the personal statement cannot exceed 500 words that means i have about 120 words to go remember that we are working towards answering the question of the personal statement so what i did with the remaining 120 words and which i broke down into two paragraphs if you want you can summarize everything you want to say into one paragraph that will make all of your paragraph six in total but what i did is i broke it down into two paragraphs in the sixth paragraph i spoke about my interest aside academia apart from the 
schooling and experiences that i have at work i am a very passionate person i am someone that um, loves to mentor i love to read i wrote a book i spoke about my book i spoke about all the other things that makes up my passion and my office so if you know that you're yeah, someone that volunteers put it there i also mentioned that i volunteer because i volunteered then at the lagos food bank and i was also volunteering as a mentor in um in the evolve mentorship program for girls there we, we we usually teach girls how to have a better life young girls and teenagers we encourage them to set goals to love themselves and to you know all the different topics that a teenager would want to know so those, those were the things i mentioned in my sixth paragraph because i wanted to show them that i was not only all about reading and studying i was like a multifaceted person that had interest in other areas so the last paragraph was where i talked about how all of my interests both academic wise and you know voluntary wise would impact my industry and how it's going to affect national development so i spoke about how after i am through with studying i'm going to use all of what i have gained to benefit my own country and how i'm going to um, benefit my community at large by volunteering and by picking up jobs that you know will require me to impute all of the skills that i had learned during my studies and then i I also uh, mentioned that I'm going to be a um, useful in the PTDF body or maybe alumni or whatever it is that they are going to have after the scholarship. That was how I rounded up the final paragraph and I also made it solid by, you know, citing examples of what I would do. You can say something like maybe you, you would, depending on what you are doing, to be honest, because I am in the finance industry, so everything I'm saying is something relating to the finance industry you can tell tell them the projects you are going to do but just make sure that you are summarizing you are telling the body that whatever thing i learn as a student in ptdf i am going to use it to benefit the community i'm going to use it to benefit my own country i'm going to use it to benefit the nation and I'm, it's going to benefit the energy industry as well because ptdf is all about energy and i mentioned that as well in my interview the question they asked me in my interview you can use that as well as a guide so whatever field that you are in ensure that you tackle all of the questions that they asked and that to be honest would help so seven paragraphs and that was how I tackled it. The last two paragraphs covered the remaining 120 words. And yeah, that, that was it. For those of you that are thinking that you do not have some of the things I have mentioned in my story, that's why my story is not the same as your own story. Okay, you have to look for what you know you've achieved that you can make as a strong point in your own story for example if you have more work experience you can make work experience the highlight of your own story of your own introduction you can say that working five years in this particular sector has broadened my knowledge on this particular subject topic and due to that i have been able to grow interest to further my studies in that area so do not um pinpoint the highlight of my own story and say that because you don't have that you can't make a good personal statement or you can't get a scholarship or you can't get a particular admission make the good achievements that you've made in your own story the highlight and that works for you as well i'm going to be sharing with you tips that can help you while writing your personal statements the first one is to plan and write down your ideas as you're going on with your application now that we, um, the application is just starting while you do other things on the portal you can always just think about what you want to write in your application the courses you want to um, study the schools you want to study you can think about the stories you want to share you can think about the experiences you want to share you can think about all the other interests that are not related to academia that you want to share if you are a um, person that is uh, 
used to volunteering or you're someone that volunteers a lot think about the projects that you've executed that you want to put into your story and make sure that you're writing it down because sometimes you might not realize that you have all of this or that you have um, gathered all of this at one point or the other but until you think about it and you keep jotting it down that's when you realize that oh so i have so many points that i can even use so make sure that you start being mentally active and if possible have a pen and um, a, a, a book close to you you can jot you can write down your idea so that wherever you are you can just quickly put it down so that you do not forget that's the first thing preparation putting your ideas together and it's going, just going to be rough you can't use that particular draft is a is a rough work second point is to pick out the relevant points from your rough work so after you've put down everything and you know it's a lot you have to start picking the relevant ones which one would form a strong point for my personal statements which one would answer the questions that the personal statement is asking so you now have to eliminate the ones that you do not need and the ones that you need you are going to put them together into the main work this particular point includes eliminating what you don't need and picking out the ones that are important the next tip is to make sure that you start working on your draft this is the longest part of the whole process so you have to make sure that you do not spend too much time on planning or eliminating the things you do not need but you spend more time on your draft so start drafting out your personal statement you can break it down into paragraphs the way i explained initially the first one is the introduction the second one is you sharing a project that will make your introduction strong the third to fifth one will be about your school your courses and why you have chosen them and the sixth and seventh one will be the paragraph answering the questions and um, showing interests that are not relating to anything about academics or your experiences and it would also answer the questions in the personal statement so if you break it down into paragraphs or into groups like that you can answer them separately and then one is not affecting the other and before you know it your personal statement is almost straight so make sure that you start working on this draft early enough so that you're not lagging behind and so that you don't have to do a rush work when the um, deadline is approaching fourth one which is the next tip is to proofread and polish so um, as at this point that you will check everything that you have written in your draft your draft will not be perfect of course but when you get to the time where you want to proofread and polish this is when you will check whether you've answered the question that the personal statement is asking you whether what you've written is strong enough you can also seek the help of people to give you a feedback you can give your personal statement to someone that is has already gone through that stage do not randomly give it to anyone this reminds me of a time where i wrote a personal statement for shivning and i gave it to someone a colleague um, at work and this person i just picked the person because the person was just experienced as a senior colleague not like the person has written the that kind of personal statement before or not like the person has gotten a scholarship or gotten an admission recently i just looked at him and i was like okay this person is um grounded in in the things at work and i gave it to him and guess what he returned it to me and said everything was perfect he didn't even correct one thing and i was like how is that even possible i hope personal statement you won't see one single correction well that's because i gave the wrong person to review so make sure that you are giving the right person the person that already has an experience in writing personal statements or someone that will be able to critically you know correct what you have done and ensure that it looks better than how you gave it to the person try to find that person and you know let the person work on it for you let the person read it and tell you the corrections to make and then be ready to put in the correction by yourself 
The next tip I'll be giving is to put in the final touch and this final touch is after you have gotten it from the proofreader or the person that has corrected it for you and um, this person would have checked for the context the person is just checking the stories the flow how you express yourself and how you answer the question but now the final check is on things like grammar and um, format of your work so ensure that you even after you've put a good personal statement together you don't want to be having little grammatical error so you can put up your document on free sites that check for grammatical errors or check that um, you are concise in the presentation of your story there are websites that check for your grammar and one of the popular ones is grammarly and i use the free version most times for my coursework and any other documents that i want to just check i check for the correctness and check for the conciseness so you can use grammarly and if you want to upgrade to the paid version you can also do that which would provide you with more you know tools to ensure that you have a concise and grammatically correct personal statement also ensure that you put your statements in the correct format because some applications will require that your personal statement or your document is in pdf format while some will, will do not mind whether it is word format or not but just check and ensure that you are putting it in the right format before you finally upload it to the portal of course the last tip is to upload so if you do not upload you are not done yet upload to the portal and then complete all your other application and submit that brings us to the end of this video i hope that i've been able to answer all the questions on your mind concerning personal statements like i said initially what i've shared here is how i was able to put my personal statement together trust me if you need more information you can always check online for more resources and also if you are working on other scholarships make sure that you check out resources for the personal statements of the specific scholarship because different scholarships have different questions that are, that are asked and, and need to be answered so you can get more resources but if this works and answers the question for your own admission or scholarship then this template should work for you so thank you so much for watching till this point i would see you in my next video kindly subscribe share like and engage with me you can also comment whatever questions you might have or whatever views you want to share concerning this video and i'll be sure to respond to you at my earliest convenience thank you guys so much for watching again i'll see you in my next video